Hello guys, in this video we will learn in depth about what bagging technique is which is one of the ensemble learning techniques in machine learning. Okay, so what is bagging? As you all know bagging is a short form for bootstrap aggregation and this works in two steps. Okay, so first step is called as bootstrap. The second step is called as aggregation. Okay, so now we will see each of these steps in detail. Okay, so let's start. So coming to the step one that is bootstrapping. So let's say we have a data set. Okay, let's denote it as D. Uh, let's say it has M capital M rows. So what we do in the first step that is bootstrap. So we take this data set. We will derive the subsets from this particular data set. Okay. So let's call the subset as D1, D2, D3, and let's say we take K subsets. Okay. So D, K. Okay. So we take these K subsets of the data. And how do we take these subsets of this particular data? We employ a technique called as random sampling with replacement. Random sampling with replacement. Okay. So, what is this random sampling with replacement? So, to give you a simple example, let's say we have a bag full of marbles uh, of two or three different colors red, blue, and yellow marbles. Okay. So, if we randomly pick two or three marbles from the bag for the first try, let's say we, we got three marbles randomly selected from the bag, we do not know which color it is, okay? And we have some probabilities of each of the color marbles. Then during the second instance, if we are going with random sampling with replacement, we will again put the marbles back in the bag which were drawn in the first try. So, for the second try, while we pick the marbles, those marbles are also included in the bag which were already drawn in the first try. Okay. So, that technique is called as sampling with replacement. So, in this given data set, let us say we have 1000 records with us. Okay. So, for the first random sampling, so let us say we draw 100 records. Okay, so this D1 will have 100 records. Okay, during the second sampling time, so during the second sampling time, what we do, we put these 100 records back in the original data set and then we again randomly sample them. We again randomly sample them. So this technique is called as random sampling with replacement random sample with replacement okay so hope you guys are clear on this particular concept so once we have drawn multiple subsets from the original data set we will train different machine learning models on each of this subset of the data m1 m2 m3 up to mk okay so these things are different machine learning models and each of these are trained separately on different subset of the data that we have derived by employing a technique called as random sampling with replacement. So, this particular step is called as bootstrap. Okay. So, once we train the model, we will also have their respective outputs. Output from model 1, output from model 2, output from model 3, and finally, output from model K. Okay. So, the entire step till the till we obtain the output from all the models is called as bootstrap step. Okay. So, this is the first step in bagging technique. So, the second step is aggregation. So, now coming to second step in the bagging technique that is aggregation. So, what is aggregation? So, 
once we have the outputs from multiple models we will club the outputs from all the models and arrive at one final output and how do we club all the outputs from the models depends upon the task at hand so if we are dealing with classification if we are dealing with classification we will go with majority voting majority voting so what is this so let's say we are dealing with the classification task wherein our task is to predict whether the tumor is cancerous or not tumor is cancerous or non cancerous okay so this is what we have to predict based on the input feature x1 x2 xn so why we have to predict so let's say we have k models right right so we will have k outputs we will have k outputs so but what is the final output so what is the final prediction so for one training data we cannot have k outputs right so out of k let's say uh, let's say we have 10 models being trained in the first step so out of 10 models let's say seven models predicts non cancerous okay and three models predict cancerous so in this case during aggregation step what we do we take the majority voting so most of the models are predicting the input tumor is non cancerous so our final output would be non cancerous okay so if majority of the models are predicting the tumor as cancerous we would take the final output as cancerous so this is when we are dealing with classification task but what if we are dealing with regression task so how do we get the final output so let's say we have the same 10 models and we are predicting the house price okay so 10 models will give us 10 different house prices house price 1 house price 2 up to house price 10 so what will be the final output we need to have a way to combine all these outputs and to have the final output right so what we can do we can take the average of all the predictions average of all model outputs right so this is called as mean output okay so this is one way but if you check the output of all the models and if you see there is a large variance if you look at the distribution of the outputs and if you happen to see large variance in the output instead of average or mean value you can go for mode uh, sorry median median as an output so that in the end we will have one final output from multiple models combined okay so this is how bagging works in case of training okay so how how testing would work so let's say we are done with training our bagging model training is done okay so how testing works so this is also important to understand right we need to understand this part as well so after training we will have multiple models right m1 m2 m3 up to k models mk correct we will have all these different models so let's say we get a unseen data now unseen data and we want to evaluate the performance of this bagging model how it is performing on unseen data so what we do we pass this unseen data to all these models and we take the output from each model output from model 1 output from model 2 and output from model k we take all these outputs and again if the task is classification we go for majority voting and if the task is regression we go with we go by taking the mean value or median value of all the outputs combined together okay so this is how we do testing on the bagging technique in ml algorithm so once you understood this 
when we can apply bagging technique right so let's just think pause the video and think for a minute okay now i'm going to tell you the answer so when do we need to use bagging so let's say we have a model with uh, let's say low bias and high variance so what do i mean by low bias and high variance so let's say the model is doing very well on training data it does very well on training data so almost 100% accurate but it fails on unseen data fails on unseen data it does really bad on unseen data so this is the scenario where we tell that our model is low bias and high variance so the best example for low bias and high variance algorithm is fully grown decision tree decision tree which is fully grown so when i say fully grown what do i mean by that so the height of the tree is huge so what do we do if you have seen my video on decision tree we go on separating out the data points with some average values or some other value right based on the impurity score so we do this indefinitely until we separate out independent each individual data points right so in the end we have multiple levels in the decision trees many levels and if you look at the last level in the decision tree all the data points will have all the nodes will have each one data point so this is called as fully grown decision tree fully grown decision tree so if this is the case if the decision tree is fully grown instead of learning we say it has learned the training data very well but internally it has remembered the data so if you want to correlate it with the education system so let's say you are giving an exam based on social studies and that too particularly history okay so there is very minimum in understanding what happened in the history we have to just remember the things right we just have to remember the things and then just go and write whatever we remember in the paper so that's what that's how we give the history exams right so that's what this decision tree we can correlate it with so it just remembers the data instead of learning so in this case this decision tree will be of the characteristic of low bias and high variance why low bias and high variance because it is doing very well on training data 100% almost 100% accuracy accuracy on training data but on the unseen data set it is failing to generalize well it doesn't generalize well okay so it is failing here so this type of models are called as low bias and high variance okay so generally what we do we take low bias and high variance model and put them in bagging we do bagging using low bias and high variance models okay so now understand what happens if we use bagging on low bias and high variance models okay so again let me just write we have model 1 model 2 model 3 and model k so these are all our low bias and high variance models let's let's assume that okay so if we have some 500 records which are completely different from the time when we were training so we let's say we trained these models on 1000 records and if we get 500 completely new set of records which are completely different from the earlier seen 1000 records on which we have trained the models so what happens if we just have one model of this category low bias and high variance model we would not do well on this 500 records our outputs will be very 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 bad the results were will be not at all acceptable okay so it's some garbage out okay so in this case in case of bagging what happens during the training itself 
if we get this 500 completely different set of records what happens so out of this 500 completely different set of records we may get around 60 records to the model 1 because we are doing random sampling with replacement correct so we may get 60 records with model 1 another 100 records to the model 2 this may get some 30 records and this may get some another 70 records so in a way we are reducing the variance of each model we are reducing variance of each model how by distributing the data across multiple models okay so in this way what we are achieving in the end we are achieving the final output the the end model is com combination of all these models right so in the end the output will be such that the output of the model this entire model will be such that it will be low bias anyway it will not get affected because training is done properly and also with this distribution of the unseen data into multiple data sets we are reducing the variance of each of the model right which of which is which are of the nature low bias and high variance so by distributing the data set into multiple models we are reducing the variance in each one of them and in the end we will get a model with low bias and low variance so this is our end goal actually so any machine learning model we would want to have a model with low bias and low variance so this is our end goal always okay so i hope you have understood how bagging works and i have tried to explain how it helps in reducing the variance in simpler terms if you have any questions please reach out to me in comment section i will be happy to answer okay so that's it for this video and this video will serve as the foundation in understanding how random forest works so actually what example i took here the fully grown decision trees and combining multiple decision trees together this is actually a overview of random forest this is how random forest works okay so i hope you guys have understood this particular section of the video and in my next video i will talk in depth about random forest we will see how we will be able to combine multiple decision trees and arrive at a better random forest model result okay so if you like the content please give it a thumbs up share it among your peers if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe so till we see in the next video happy learning